The first LEGO League community is at a crossroads for the upcoming FLL season. And this is thanks to the arrival of the new generation of LEGO Mindstorms. Many have already seen that Spike Prime and its twin, the Robot Inventor, bring distinct advantages to the table in the FLL competition, particularly compared to the outgoing EV3. And this has got many people asking, is it worth it to switch to Spike Prime for the upcoming FLL seasons? This has become a question that I start to hear all the time on the channel. Should I take the dive and embrace this new platform in Spike Prime, or should I stick with the tried and true EV3 for a few more seasons? Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the distinct advantages that I think Spike Prime holds over the EV3, and this amounts to five reasons why I think it's only a matter of time before Spike Prime will start taking over the FLL competition. So if you want to make an informed decision on which one to buy, you better watch to the end. What is up everyone? My name is Kyle and you are watching Builder Dude 35, a YouTube channel that is all about Lego Mindstorms. And today, I'm talking about the reasons why I think Spike Prime is going to disrupt the first LEGO League competition. I have five compelling reasons for you guys, but before I get started with jumping into the reasons, I just want to issue a brief disclaimer. That is, for the upcoming 2021-22 FLL season, Spike Prime is explicitly allowed as per FLL's global rules. However, Robot Inventor is not explicitly allowed. Even though Spike Prime and Robot Inventor are pretty much the same thing, that means it is incumbent on you to double check with your local region and your regional director to make sure that Robot Inventor is legal for competition in your region before you decide to use it. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be referring to Spike Prime, but everything I say about Spike Prime will also be applicable to Robot Inventor. Reason number one why I think Spike Prime will pretty quickly replace place the EV3 and FLL has to do with Spike Prime's gyro sensor. Using a gyro sensor for navigation is something that's been very popular in FLL over the years. However, the gyro sensor that comes with the EV3 has been the bane of the existence of many FLL teams. It's been very unreliable, prone to drift, and hard to get an accurate and repeatable result out of it. I'm happy to report that in my experience using the new gyro sensor for Spike Prime slash Robot Inventor, the new gyro sensor that is built into that hub is light years ahead of where it was with the EV3. This new gyro sensor is a lot more accurate and a lot more reliable. Where the old EV3 sensor was prone to drift, it's actually very hard to get the new sensor to drift. And this is important when you're relying on the sensor for your robot's navigation. Another distinct advantage of the new sensor is that it is built into the intelligent hub of Spike Prime slash Robot Inventor. That means this gyro sensor is not going to consume an extra one of your sensor ports, which is a point I'll come back to later. The icing on the cake is the new gyro sensor that comes with this new Mindstorms has three axes on it. That's right, three axes. You get pitch, roll, and yaw, which is way better than the EV3 gyro, which was just one axis per sensor. So basically you're getting a more accurate sensor that can make more measurements while being less intrusive to your robot design. It's straight wins all around. Reason number two is all about the redesigned motors that come with this new generation of Mindstorms. In particular, these motors are a lot more compact than the large motors that came with the EV3 or even the NXT before it. Those old robot motors were kind of clunky and you basically had to design your entire robot around these motors with the, using them as your primary consideration. However, these new motors are a lot smaller, which makes building your robot a lot more convenient. In addition, in my experience, I've noticed that these new motors are quite a bit more accurate. There seems to be less slop in the gear train. That means less imprecision or mechanical play in the motor when you turn it by hand. If you've ever used the EV3, especially in a robot design that uses tall wheels, you know just how obnoxious this mechanical play in the motor can be because it makes your odometry less accurate and overall you have a less repeatable robot. With these new motors being a lot tighter, what you end up getting is a more reliable robot that navigates better. If you're interested in learning more about the new motors that come with the Spike Prime slash Robot Inventor, I'll put a link up to that video that I made a few months ago up here, and you can see my whole deep dive. Basically what this means is if you compare the improved accuracy and reliability of the gyro sensor with the improved 
accuracy of the motors, you get an FLL robot that is a lot more accurate if you're using the Spike Prime Robot Inventor platform. And that's going to lead to less frustration and more consistency when using it on the FLL competition mat. This is a great tie in to my point number three, which is it's so much easier to make an effective FLL robot with the hardware, meaning all of the elements, motors, and sensors that come in one Spike Prime or Robot Inventor package. In particular, all of the hardware is minimized. So the new Intelligent Hub is way smaller than the EV3 brick. As I mentioned before, the motors are also smaller and the sensors are minimized as well. What this means is it's a lot easier to make a compact robot design. My own FLL robot design, which is called Proxima, is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. You can see how effortless it is to make a robot that is so small. It's even way smaller than the outgoing Sirius robot, which was based on the EV3 platform. And Sirius was heralded as being a very small robot to begin with. If you're interested in learning more about Proxima and its Spike Prime based twin Gemini, you can check out this video that I made a few weeks ago, which is my debut of that robot platform. And if you're thinking about jumping into Spike Prime or Robot Inventor for use in FLL, that is a platform that I recommend you jump into. We're at the point in the video where I have to stop and address one of the most frequent counter arguments that comes from people who are hesitant to adopt the new generation of Mindstorms, and that is the number of ports. So as you all probably know, the EV3 had eight ports, whereas this new Mindstorms has only six ports. And a lot of people would look at that change and see that as a huge step backwards and would make them hesitate on trying to get into this new platform. I first want to say I totally understand this hesitation. Having a lot of ports and the flexibility to plug things in is a huge part of building an effective FLL robot because sometimes you need to plug in a lot of motors and a lot of sensors and decreasing the number of ports feels like a step backwards. And while many people cite this as a major handicap, I like to challenge the notion of major and offer my opinion that maybe it's not as bad as it might seem at first. So first you have to consider what I said before about the gyro sensor being built into the intelligent hub. So that means this gyro sensor doesn't consume any of your ports it's already built into the robot. Whereas the EV3 required you to use one of your ports to dedicate to the gyro sensor. So if you're the kind of person who always used the gyro sensor for FLL anyway, that means you're really giving up one sensor port instead of two, because you would have plugged the gyro sensor in anyway. But I also encourage you to look at this change not as an absolute loss, but rather as a trade-off. Sure, you're losing out on the sheer number of ports by moving from eight to six, but what you're gaining in the process Process is flexibility. Because the new Spike Prime Robot Inventor ports don't require a specific motor or sensor assignment like the EV3 did, you can plug a motor or sensor into any port at any time. So that means you can plug in six motors at a time, six sensors at a time, or any combination in between. Whereas with the EV3, you are restricted to exclusively four motor ports and four sensor ports, which is less flexible. Of course, being able to plug in six motors or six sensors at a time it might not always be useful or practical or allowed in FLL, but just having the flexibility to plug in whichever motor or sensor you want at any place in your robot is a huge leg up that I think not enough people are considering right now. Okay, so now we can move back into my official list of five reasons. So my reason number four comes down to the programming options that are available to you with Spike Prime and Robot Inventor. In particular is the Scratch programming language. It is my personal opinion, again, this is an opinion, from my experience using these programming languages, it is my opinion that Scratch is a lot more intuitive to use than the outgoing EV3 software. In addition, I found that using Scratch on the new app experience for the new Mindstorms is a lot smoother and more conducive to building larger programs than the old LabVIEW software was. Because if you use the old EV3 graphical programming, you knew that the software got very laggy and kind of buggy as your programs grew bigger and bigger. And in FLL, we all know that 
big programs are kind of part of the game. Let's also not forget that Scratch is a lot more similar to programming languages in the real world. As a matter of fact, Python is also offered as an option for the robot inventor. This means that the programming skills that you learn with this new generation of Mindstorms are more transferable to programming exercises that you might have to do in the real world. That'll help you at university and that'll help you secure a career in software design if that's what you want. So I think it's only a matter of time before educators start realizing that the new Mindstorms with the more applicable programming languages is a better tool from a pedagogical standpoint for teaching programming than the old EV3 graphical environment was. And last but not least, my point number five is a very important one, and it's kind of a sobering reality for us fans of the EV3. That is, the EV3 is on the endangered species list, and this is being pushed not only from the FLL side, but from LEGO side as well. Earlier this year, LEGO Retail stopped selling the EV3 31313 retail set, and its homepage listed the EV3 as sold out. And then sometime this summer, LEGO Education stopped selling the education version of the EV3. That means you no longer can buy an EV3 set from either LEGO Education or LEGO Retail. You must go to a third party. And a lot of these third party sites are charging absolutely absurd prices for the EV3. And this means it's so much harder for schools to get their hands on them, especially if you're on a budget. So the natural response for a lot of teams will be to just adopt the new generation of Mindstorms, which is being sold by LEGO, and you can get it at a much more reasonable price. And do you guys remember back in January at the beginning of 2021 when the first of Tennessee region announced that they were going to be discontinuing the EV3 in competition. This got a lot of people scared but it turns out that they actually turned heel on that decision and clarified that they would be allowing the EV3 for the upcoming FLL season. However, the clarification on their website does say that they're going to phase out the EV3 in the 2022 season, that is one year from now. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if other FLL regions start following suit with this motion to phase out older robotics platforms in competition to give a more level playing field for the teams that either want to or need to move on to the new robotics platform for a competition. So make sure you're checking in with your local first region to see what their rules are like for upcoming FLL seasons and whether they plan to allow old legacy platforms to continue to compete over the next few years. Are you going to be an early adopter of the new platform or would you rather stick with what's tried and true? Let me know in the comments section below whether you're going to be using Spike Prime slash Robot Inventor or EV3 or even an older platform like NXT or RCX in the upcoming FLL season. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see you next time. See you later.